Several weeks ago, I went to the Jacksonville Fall Festival, or Steam Engine Festival. I call it several different things depending on what I'm talking about. But it was the, at, at the flea market there, I picked this up. It's an 1890s or early 1900s starting rheostat. It's, I picked it up for $40. It's a fraction of the price you'd pay on the internet. There's, a, there's several of these up on eBay, and they're like four, $300 to $400. Basically, it's a selection of different resistance. Like, for instance, we have high resistance less resistance all the way down to no resistance. Well, theoretically no resistance. Of course, there's going to be a small amount of resistance. And that's j changing the resistance between these two poles right here. If I were to take this motor and run it in series with this, I would be able to start it slowly instead of this motor it starts very fast, so it pulls a lot of power. So this is good for larger motors. It has a nameplate on the front. And it took me a little bit and quite a bit of research to figure out who manufactured it. But I did. So here's the nameplate. We have RPM. It's blank because it's probably not made for any specific motor. Volts, 220. That's 220 and 240 are interchangeable, so it's, it's 240. 5.5, .5, bleh. So 5.5, .5, bleh is probably amps because if it was ohms, well, then it would measure 5.5 .5 ohms between here. And it doesn't. So that's probably amps so it's 5.5 .5 amps at 240 volts is about 1200 watts 60 cycles one phase manufactured by ch and that's where it stumped me ch i was thinking maybe they had to do a chicago like chicago hardware or something like that because i live in illinois i got this in illinois and i it was probably made in illinois but i spent about a week or so looking on the internet including looking for chicago h looking up like initials of company names and stuff like that but when it, but whenever I started searching stuff like old charging controller, because I was thinking at first maybe this was to for a big like electric char car charging controller, because usually they would have one of these that would power a big mercury arc rectifier to charge the batteries on a like an electric forklift or electric car, like a Chicago electric car. But whenever I typed in starting rheostat, I found an eBay auction for these. Actually, four of them, or actually I think at the time it was like five, uh, four. Uh, like six or so, it's quite a few. They're all like several hundred dollars a piece, like up to four hundred dollars a piece. I'm glad I got this for only forty bucks. But all those auctions, they had really nice pictures of the nameplates, and they were made by the Cutler Hammer Company. So that's CH. Figure that out. So I went on the internet looking for Cutler Hammer starting rheostats, and I found quite a few images and even a few diagrams. Seems to be they started making these around the 1880s, and they stopped around the 1920s, maybe 1930s or so. A lot of the first ones from the, uh, from the 1880s were very small for 110 volt AC and couldn't handle very much power, like maybe four or 500 watts of power. But then around the 1880s or so, they started branching out, making bigger ones and things for higher voltage, like this one. Then around the, like 1910 or so, they started adding a bunch of coils onto them. So I'm thinking this was made around like 1890 to 1905 or so. And because if it was later, it would have big coils, or at least the place where the coils were, but you can tell there was nothing mounted here. It's just solid marble or rock or whatever this is. By the way, the rock is really beautiful. It'd be really nice if I could polish this up. Well, anyway, so this is probably like the 1890s, 1905 or so. I'm just gonna go with the 1890s because it's even cooler. It's very, very rare to find any electrical stuff from the 1800s, so I'm gonna say 1800s, even if it's not correct. I'm gonna be very biased in my opinion. <laughs> Anyway, so here we have this. Let's fire it up. Let's pop these nuts off. Now I'll connect these wires up so I can switch this on and off. Now I have these connectors coming off of it. Awesome. Okay, okay, this is how we have it rigged up. Power coming in through here. This is a switch and going in there. That's full power. Now 
this motor is a, I think it's a quarter horsepower. Maybe it's an eight. Yeah, it's a quarter horsepower from the 1920s off of a old washing machine. I think it's a Maytag. Well, anyway, so let's test this. <laughs> It does take a little bit longer to start up, but it's this isn't very resistive. I, I would hope it would be more like 20 ohms instead of 2 ohms. the back are some bolts right here 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 and here they go all the way through and hook the front piece on there now I assume that the heating element filament is connected to the, to the front part so I only have to take off these four bolts and this back part should come off or maybe this is a big plate that comes off here I don't know Have a welding rod box holding it open and look in there. Now that's pretty cool. I wasn't expecting a configuration like this. There's many rows of coils. Three by ten. So there's thirty of these in here. And they're all connected up to the top. Which is very simple. Just bolts that connect it here. Unfortunately, I don't want to open up any more because I was thinking that it wouldn't be so big in there. Wow. It's These wires are very stiff and it's very difficult to open it up. But that's good enough just to see a look inside there. These seem to be steel wires because they're rusting. But they might have, they might be some type of compound. They might be like stainless steel, but no. It's very greasy in here. It's like a soot. Looks almost like an oven. On the inside, the paint is really nice, so. So it looks like this is making a nice little safety coating that's protecting the paint. Not counting, it never is opened in here. Probably hasn't been opened in a hundred years. It's like an enamel. How this works is you have the vents down here and the vent up here and this heats air, sucks air up and through here and puts it out here so hot air would go here. This this originally isn't supposed to lay down flat like this. It's supposed to be mounted on a wall so air can come through and cool the coils or the res resistors. So, that's it for the 1890s Cutler Hammer starting rheostat. It's pretty awesome. Definitely going to think of something to do with this. Maybe, maybe I can put some like, big power meters next to it and like put it on a wall or something like that to make like, a big power charger. Don't know. Well, either way, hope you guys enjoyed this video and thanks for watching. See ya!